Hi everyone and welcome to Odetug's online education series. Today's presentation is a case study using EDM, EDMCS to solve master data challenges presented by Kevin Black of Aletheia. Today's presentation will be recorded and available for viewing on the Odetug website. Please put your questions into the questions box at any time during the presentation and we'll address them during the Q&A period at the end of the webinar. So welcome Kevin and thank you for being here today. Thank you very much, Karen, and welcome everybody. Good day. Thank you for joining us, and apologies again for the uh, snafu of last week, but uh, looking forward to telling you a bit more about a recent project that we delivered involving enterprise data management. So um, as far as the agenda, I'll briefly uh, cover some background on both Lithia and myself. Then we will dive into the project overview, uh, both the client that was involved as well as some of the objectives um, included in the scope of the project. Um, I'll briefly kind of do a detour um, and talk a little bit about how EDM and DRM, data relationship management, um, compare to each other. But really the focus will be on this EDM project and I'll go through some different challenges that we encountered both on the technical and the business side and how we leveraged EDM to solve those and then we'll go into a wrap up and Q&A. So um, a brief company history. So many of you may have known Renzel as either Renzel and Associates or more recently as Edgewater Renzel. Um, so just to let everybody know, we are still here. So last year we joined forces with a company called Alithia and they are based in, out of Canada and have a strong presence in Canada as well as a strong footprint in the Oracle ERP space. So I have to say so far it's it's been a very nice complementary acquisition, uh, kind of bringing the ERP and the EPM skill sets and expertise and experience together. So uh, rest assured all of the, the leaders and other people you may have interacted with in the past that were part of Renzo are still with us. Uh, we're just now called Alithia. A lot, of, a lot of numbers and words on this slide. I won't go through all of these other than to say, um, obviously we have a lot of experience, a lot of clients and a lot of projects. And really, to me, the key is that middle box about the team highlights. Um, we have a very experienced team. We have many Oracle Aces on staff and just a lot of experience across different uh, verticals and uh, products uh, in both the on-prem and now the EPM cloud arena. So um, I will just kind of leave it at that. A little background about myself. Um, I was actually thinking my career actually started coming up almost 30 years ago, so I feel very old. Um, but really the last 15 years or so have been focused more on the Hyperion space. Uh, first as a, a client or a customer, and then more recently as a, a consultant on the partner side. So about 14, 15 years ago, I was uh, working at a company called First Data in Denver, Colorado. And we implemented uh, Hyperion for the first time, which included DRM, HFM, and FDM. It was actually FDM Classic at that point. And I was the first the DRM application architect and then eventually became the administrator for DRM implementation. Um, eventually, as our Hyperion footprint grew, we started to expand into multiple planning applications, S-Base cubes, uh, upgrades, additional HFM functionality, what have you, and I was managing our global support team. About five years ago, I joined Alithia um, as a consultant and initially focused solely on DRM along with the data relationship governance or the DRG workflow module. That was really my, my focus until early 2018, this product called Enterprise Data Management or EDM came about. And since then I've really been focused on EDM implementations. And then you can see listed there um, my Twitter handle as well as my, my blog. I would love for you to check those out. And uh, hopefully very soon I will be unveiling my own uh, 
personal website as well that will contain some of the same blog content plus other materials. Okay, so getting more into the project. So the client involved in this project was Care First or Blue Cross Blue Shield of Maryland. Um, as you can see here, Care First is a major health insurer in the mid-Atlantic mid region, uh, serving over 3 million members. Uh, they've been around for over 80 years and they have over 625,000 members in the federal employees health benefits programs. We're talking a major health insurer and uh, it's been very uh, enjoyable to work with them. A few more statistics about Care First. Uh, again, you can see the size of them. They have over 5,000 associates and contractors. And what I kind of like is just how many awards they received in terms of customer service uh, and most most ethical companies. So it's uh, it's been a, a company that's been around for a long time, and they do what they do very well. As you can imagine, being a major health insurer. Um, and also being involved on kind of the healthcare reform side of things uh, and with federal employees, you can just imagine the reporting requirements they have to go through. So there's extensive reporting requirements, not only to the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association, but to various insurance entities, uh, Office of Personnel and Management, and, and other entities that you see listed there. So, um, a lot of a lot of obligations and compliance requirements um, due to the nature of work that they do. So that is Care First. Getting more into what brought us into the fold. So Care First has been a Hyperion customer for a very long time, and they actually go back to the Oracle Financial Analyzer, the good old OFA for those of you that may have worked with that. Um, in around early 2010, they replaced OFA with a custom S-based solution. And this solution worked well. It handled uh, some extremely complex allocation algorithms that they were dealing with, a, a lot of data. They had many cubes, and many hierarchies, um, but this custom S-based solution was working very well. But as we all know, times change and, and we need to, to change along with those. So, the two particular changes or initiatives that came about were really uh, both a ground to cloud movement as well as a new enterprise cost management cost allocation project. So as part of the ground to cloud, what they were really trying to do is like many companies out there, they're trying to simplify and standardize and just reduce the maintenance, especially on the IT side of their applications. So they're trying to get a bit more um, leverage with off-the-shelf, commercially available products, not as much customization, and really trying to reduce some of those costs. At the same time, um, there was this enterprise-wide cost management initiative that was starting up, and they realized that they needed to kind of come up with a new solution to support this initiative, and then with the Oracle's embracing a movement towards the cloud, it made sense to really uh, follow that along and, and embrace the EPM cloud world. And then luckily for me and Alethea, they also realized that, you know, until this point, they really didn't have a, a good master data management solution. Everything they had done had been maintaining hierarchies in EAS or maintaining them in offline spreadsheets and loading them up. There wasn't any central master data solution, there wasn't any governance or any controls around that. And it was a major pain point that they wanted to address along with the, the enterprise initiatives that were coming about. So a quick overview of some of the technologies that were involved in this project. So enterprise data management, obviously. Um, since this, this was a, a cost allocation initiative, uh, profitability and cost management, or PCMCS, was also uh, kind of the driver of this project, and EDM was brought in to support PCM. Um, Oracle EBS was also in play. I'll talk more about that in a few slides. Um, due to various data and metadata integrations that were needed, uh, we did um, install and leverage an EPM Jetbox. And due to uh, some internal 
uh, standards and policies of care first. Uh, that jump box had to be Linux. So that uh, was an interesting uh, part for us to tackle. And then obviously we had a lot of integration technologies to support everything going on with uh, that jump box, uh, Linux shell scripts, Perl, and then heavy use of EPM automate. So kind of an interesting uh, a mix of products and technologies. So before I get more into the technical details of the project, I'll, I'll kind of take a brief detour into DRM versus EDM. And I was hesitant to put these next couple slides in there because I get asked this question a lot about how does DRM and EDM compare? And oftentimes I don't find that comparison to be that valuable um, for various reasons, but I think it is worthwhile to at least uh, put a few points out there that I think are important. So to me, the first one is a lot of people think of or refer to EDM as DRM in the cloud. Um, it's really not the case, in my opinion. Um, Oracle did not do a lift and shift of DRM to the cloud like they have done with some of the other products. EDM was a completely brand new product written from the ground up with a very different architecture and a very different philosophy on managing master data. So while DRM in the cloud is true at a very high level sense, um, it really isn't true in terms of how the product works. Um, granted, there are similarities uh, in some of the terminologies. Uh, for those of you that have worked with DRM, there's the concept of node types, EDM has something similar. Uh, some of the actions to, to maintain your hierarchies, like add, insert, remove, delete, that does exist in EDM. Um, DRM has a bulk update mechanism called action scripts. EDM has something very similar called request files. And, and more recently, EDM did start to introduce some workflow um, functionality that is starting to become on par with the DRG module of DRM. So I will admit there are some differences or some similarities, but to me, there are many more differences. So here is a Kind of a high level review of that so talking foundation and philosophy drm for those of you that have worked with or supported drm it's all based around your versions and the hierarchies within those versions whereas edm is really a different philosophy it's built around purpose-built deployment applications and it really is designed to leverage what is called packaged adapters that provide out of the box application setup, validations, and integration to specific cloud products such as PBCS and ePBCS, as well as Financial Cloud Geo. DRM is uh, very agnostic. It can work very effectively in supporting EPM and non-EPM um, sources and targets. Um, and like I said, EDM is a bit more purpose-built, not to say it can't support things that are not leveraging these package adapters. In fact, the project I'm about to tell you about um, was not involved with uh, using these package adapters. Um, but again, it's a very different philosophy of how the product is architected. When you look at the data model, um, there are some similarities. Obviously, DRM, you have properties and, and property categories. Uh, you have versions, hierarchies, hierarchy groups. Um, with EDM, um, while it does have properties, it has also a concept of a data chain. So for those that have been implementing or supporting EDM, uh, you're aware that there are different data chain objects like hierarchy sets and node types and node sets that work in conjunction to kind of present and manage your hierarchy. So it's a, a very different uh, data model under the, under the hood. Um, and then it also leverages this, this concept of views and viewpoints. And I'll talk a bit more about this in a few slides, but views and viewpoints are really how you interact with and maintain your hierarchies. Um, DRM obviously has um, node access groups and roles and permissions, as does EDM, but EDM, again, due to the differences with the data model, uh, these uh, roles and permissions are really managed at different points within the data chain. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, DRM has a very robust uh, data governance module. Uh, recently, earlier this year, EDM did introduce approval workflows. 
um, and we are actually leveraging those at some of their clients. Um, EDM does not quite um, have some of the other functionalities such as enrichment workflows and some of the forms and conditional uh, workflow branching that you can do with DRG. So some of those bells and whistles aren't quite there yet, but they're coming. Um, but uh, at this point, it's really focused on approval policies. And then just in terms of overall legacy, I, I like to think of DRM as kind of that, that workhorse product. It's just, I mean, I love DRM. It's a great product, um, but I also love EDM. And what I like to tell people to me, sometimes I think of DRM as more of that kind of that middle-aged professional, someone that's kind of grown up and mature, very self-assured, and just really has his or her act together. Whereas EDM, sometimes it feels a bit more like that teenager that's uh, sometimes a bit awkward, but growing up very quickly, and before you know it, they're gonna be driving and moving off to college. So while EDM is a, a relative newcomer, um, to me, the gap between what it can do and what DRM can do is closing rapidly. But I think the most important part here is that to me, EDM will never exactly equal DRM in terms of functionality. And that's okay because again, it's a very different philosophy behind what it's trying to do and how it's trying to do it. So uh, hopefully that gives you a, a bird's eye view of kind of what I see. Um, as how far as DRM and EDM line up, and uh, feel free to ask uh, questions later on if, if you'd like to drill into that. But really, the point of this presentation is to talk more about this project to care first. So, this diagram here, um, there's a lot going on, but the idea is if I kind of look at this diagram moving left to right, these two boxes with the red outline are my two enterprise data management applications. Uh, we had two, uh, one for the primary cost or line of business um, area of Care First, and a second one for the FEP business. The LOB application is considered the primary application where master data changes originate. For hierarchies that are shared and are common across the two EDM applications, uh, we set up this feature called subscriptions to to align and synchronize those hierarchies. Um, you can see up here, you know, uh, dimensions were maintained via request files, um, as well as on the FEP application for any alternate hierarchies that were unique to FEP, those were maintained directly through requests as well. Uh, there is a slight difference in how we maintained the cost center dimension coming out of Oracle EBS, so I will talk about that in a couple slides. But the idea is all of the, the maintenance occurred in EDM, where we then pushed uh, dimensions, as well as we had some mappings being maintained in this EDM application to the EPM jump box. Once those were were pushed to the EPM jump box, we had automated scripts that would pick those up, uh, perform some minor transformation on those dimension extracts coming out of EDM, and then load those to respective PCM applications. So you actually can see we have three PCM applications on the far right. We have a cost calculation application, a cost reporting, and then the FEP application. So the overall landscape is two EDM applications leveraging this jump box, supporting three different PCM applications. Getting a bit more into the numbers uh, behind that solution, um, this just kind of shows you some of the details. So um, I mentioned earlier this concept of a packaged adapter. Um, currently there are packaged adapters for uh, planning in the cloud, both regular planning and enterprise planning, as well as financial cloud GL. Since my target applications for this project were PCM, I needed to use the custom adapter um, in order to support that. Talk more about the, uh, the challenges with the custom adapter in a bit. Um, you can see the, the applications there. Number of users, you know, not a, a large number, um, under 20 all together. Um, Five dimensions in one application, four in the other. Uh, there were two mapping integrations um, that were maintained in the primary EDM application. 
And then as far as record counts, um, you can see we have almost, for the primary application, almost 16,000 dimension numbers and well over 16,000 mappings uh, for the primary application and well over 9,000 uh, dimension numbers for the second EDM application. But what's interesting is when you look at the total unique record count, it came out to about 5,300. And that's probably up to 55, 5,600 by now um, since the project's been completed for a while. But it just goes to show how many alternate hierarchies Cure First had, which is why they so desperately needed a centralized master data management solution. Uh, in fact, one of the dimensions, this line of business dimension, had actually 18 alternate hierarchies. Um, so just to give you an idea of what they were dealing with. So what I decided to do is list uh, three challenges that I encountered in this project and the three solutions we came up with. So the first challenge I call finding the right balance. And really it gets to kind of a crux of a master data management deployment. You really want to centralize your hierarchy maintenance and avoid duplicative effort. I mean, that's the whole point of a master data management tool is to get out of that redundant maintenance. But at the same time, like I mentioned, EDM has this philosophy of leveraging purpose-built deployment specific applications for each of its target applications. So how do you reconcile those two seemingly contradictory objectives? And it was really a two-pronged approach. The first is to create maintenance views. So when you create EDM applications, out of the box you will get what is called a default application view. And it is a view that will have a viewpoint for each of the dimensions in that application where maintenance views are critical is when you have multiple EDM applications and you want to start to share some of that common hierarchy maintenance across applications. Maintenance views allow you to kind of uh, connect the dots in that sense. So we made heavy use of maintenance views so that the EDM administrator care first could still make a single metadata change and have that automatically um, be replicated in the other application, which leads me to the second part of the solution, which was subscriptions. So subscriptions is a functionality that allows you to subscribe a target viewpoint to all or part of a source viewpoint so that as metadata changes are made to that source viewpoint, whether it's adding a member, moving a member, updating an alias, whatever you may have, that same change will be automatically replicated and synchronized to the target viewpoint to keep your hierarchies in sync. Um, we also did some kind of minor, but I think helpful uh, items as far as visual tagging of the viewpoints that did contain subscriptions, just to keep it clear to the DM administrator where the subscriptions were, were configured. And, and so they were kind of assured that the the metadata change would be captured in the target viewpoint. So really this kind of provided the best of both worlds. It really allowed, allowed me to embrace that purpose-built philosophy that EDM is so um, set on, but it also gave me the ability to centralize that hierarchy maintenance for the common hierarchy changes so they did not have to make the same hierarchy change in two or three different places. Okay, challenge number two. I, I mentioned a few slides back about this uh, cost center dimension coming out of Oracle EBS. So for all the other dimensions, they were mastered and maintained directly in EDM. The exception was this cost center. And if you hear me refer to it as organization, that's what they call it. So um, cost center is organization. Um, for this dimension only, the primary hierarchy gets coming out of Oracle EBS. But at the same time, we have several alternate hierarchies that only live in EDM. So the challenge was how do we kind of continue to refresh that primary hierarchy that is not authored or mastered in EDM while still maintaining our alternate hierarchies in EDM. So we played around with a few approaches and we ended up kind of settling on kind of a dual request file process. So 
we have a request file that is generated out of EBS. It's a, it's a, a very straightforward request file. It's a spreadsheet containing the parent, the child, and the description. We load that um, basically twice. We have a primary cost center viewpoint that is part of the bound data chain that will be exported to PCM. We also have a separate viewpoint with its own independent data chain that we load this file to. We loaded it to that second one to basically give us our baseline to compare against. So we can take this request file out of EBS, um, not worry so much about all the action codes and what the deltas are, just load that into two different places and then leverage to me what is one of the best features of EDM, which is the compare feature. It is very easy to compare viewpoints in EDM, identify differences, and generate requests to address and resolve those differences. So a bit more detail on that. Here is a, a screenshot of our cost center or organization maintenance view. You can see all of the different viewpoints or tabs going across the, the top here. Because remember, we have two EDM applications with uh, unique alternate hierarchies in each, but a shared primary hierarchy. So to really leverage the, the compare feature that is so strong in EDM, we set up some of these different viewpoints. But again, the idea is we can load that request file out of EBS into this independent viewpoint to establish our baseline. And then we also load it into our, our primary bound viewpoint and then through the, the compare reconciliation process, we can kind of get that cleaned up. And the exciting thing is I've continued to work with Oracle product development and we've actually developed a, or thought of a, a few more um, enhancements to this process, process that uh, we're, we're testing out right now to, to actually eliminate a couple steps. So it's actually working out pretty well. So you may be wondering if you've ever implemented or supported EDM, why did I not use the import function? The import function is, is kind of meant to seed a dimension or to load an external systems hierarchies into EDM. So there was really two reasons why we didn't go that route. One is imports are not linked or integrated yet to subscriptions. And the subscription part of this was very critical because when I update the primary cost center hierarchy in my primary EDM application, a subscription request is generated to perform those same updates to the primary cost center hierarchy in my second EDM application. So not being able to trigger that subscription was, was uh, an issue for us. And then the other reason, and probably the biggest reason of all, was really the alternate hierarchies. Um, when you import a external file into EDM, it basically will replace your dimension with the contents of that file. So since those alternate hierarchies only lived inside EDM, we would have to somehow save those off and kind of reattach and reintegrate those into EDM every time we did that import process. So we actually found this uh, kind of double request uh, mechanism that we came up, up with to actually work a bit easier as far as maintaining the alternate hierarchies. Okay, um, the third and final challenge had to do with mappings. And mappings is maybe not the best term. Um, it's really associations of target ranges. So um, I'm, I'm not a PCM expert by any stretch, um, but there's this concept of cost allocations and uh, a concept of a target range dimension. And what we required is there are associations or intersections of both cost centers and lines of business members to specific target range members that drive calculation logic in PCM. So if you kind of think of it as a target range matrix where you have across the top in your columns or your different target ranges, going down the left side in your rows are say the cost centers. And it's kind of a, one, a ones and zeros type of a, a, a matrix or table where we need to identify the valid intersections of specific cost centers and target ranges. So um, since we had all of the dimensions in EDM already, we figured why not maintain these mapping associations in EDM as well. A secondary challenge was CareFirst had been relying on this spreadsheet report um, that kind of matches that matrix I tried to verbally describe where you have target ranges going across the top, 
um, customers going down the, the left side. Um, they, they were very used to kind of reviewing this uh, mapping report to kind of make updates to their target range association. So we had a challenge of how are we going to produce that out of enterprise data management. So um, we, we had a couple of attempts at this. The first one did not quite work, but we learned a lot. So the first idea was to essentially leverage a property or an attribute in EDM, almost like a UDA. It was basically going to be a comma separated value list um, where a given customer, for example, would have this target range property that would contain a comma delimited list of all the valid target ranges it was associated with. And we kind of went this route because there was some commonality in how the customers rolled up. So if I have a, a pool of customers rolling up to a common parent, um, it was likely that that parent um, had the same target range association. So we thought, well, if we can kind of define those um, associations at a parent level in, in the hierarchy, we can kind of let the hierarchy do the work for us. But as we got into it, we ran into several issues, uh, not least of which is um, at this point when we were doing this project, property inheritance was not quite available. It came out kind of during our testing phase, but it wasn't quite there. Um, it is now, um, but property inheritance wasn't available at the time we were doing the build. So it kind of made the, the parent inheritance uh, benefit we were hoping for uh, not be realized. But really bigger than that, it, it just became very hard to work with because some of these cost centers can have 50, 100, 200 target range associations. So trying to visualize and view that inside EDM in a common delimited list or a property, it was just very difficult from a, a usability perspective for the end user to really see what target ranges were associated. And then in addition to that, when we would export this out of EDM, we had to perform some major transformation on the extracts out of EDM to convert the kind of the one-to-many relationships into one-to-one -one mappings. So um, it was uh, an interesting effort, but didn't quite get us to where we wanted. So second attempt, um, EDM nicely supports the concept of mappings, where you can essentially set up a mapping view similar idea to a maintenance view where you can basically bring together two different dimensions into one viewpoint and kind of manage them in a side-by-side -side drag and drop um, process. So we decided to create a mapping view that brought together the target range dimension, our cost center dimension, our business dimension. And we could essentially build these hierarchies and we built kind of a basically a two level tree. The parent member is the target range, the child member is the cost centers or the lines of business members. And even better when we, not only was it easy to maintain with the, the side by side and compare features of EDM, but when we export mappings out of EDM, it comes out in the one-to-one -one format that we needed. So it avoided all of that transformation ETL work that we were going to have to do. Um, as far as the Excel report that um, CareFirst relied heavily on, um, I guess you could say we cheated a little bit, but we actually found out it wasn't an issue at all because you can do a viewpoint download of the target range mappings out of EDM, and that perfectly supports creating a simple pivot table in Excel, and, and there you have the report that they were so used to see. So I have a couple more slides to hopefully visualize that a bit better. Uh, here is our an example of our organization or cost center to target range maintenance view. So you can see these members that are prefixed with SR underscore, those are the target ranges and the child members underneath are the cost centers. So this is how we maintain these relationships. Uh, you notice there's other viewpoints up here. So in EDM, you can display the target range matrix next to the target range dimension or the organization dimension or the lines of business, and then through simple drag and drop or request files, maintain that dimension. And then, like I said, when you export it out, uh, here's a screenshot. It's a simple CSV with source target and actually a sign change flag, which we didn't really need. Um, it was ignored, but there is the one-to-one -one mappings that we needed to provide to PCM. 
And here's just a simple screenshot of that Excel report. So in the, the background image is the viewpoint download from EDM of that target range matrix. Um, running a simple pivot table wizard, you can generate this uh, where you, again, across the columns on the top, you have your different target ranges. Um, going down the left side, you have your cost centers and the ones designate where there is an association. So the care first administrators can run this pivot table report and then do filtering to easily identify the, the current intersections of cost centers to target ranges and prepare a request file if they wanted to make some changes in EDM. Okay, so to conclude on the challenges, we, we, we made it. <laughs> Project was completed, went through multiple iterations of parallel tests, and we are moving forward. Um, what's next? Uh, several things are being discussed. Uh, we'll kind of see where CareFirst wants to go, but obviously there's many opportunities to further expand the EDM footprint based on new functionality that has been released since we went live at CareFirst. Um, and then obviously, you know, we can start explaining, um, expanding into um, planning in the cloud. Uh, there's been discussions about ARCs, and there even is a, another initiative going on um, involving cost center managers and approval limits. And since we put so much effort into maintaining that cost center dimension in EDM, it kind of provides a nice, a nice foundation where we could leverage that and start to tag through some additional attributes, um, approval limits to different cost centers, uh, push those out to an external application, and that would provide um, some of the, the workflow approvals that they're looking for. So to conclude, um, I talked about three challenges, three solutions. I'll continue the, the threes theme here and, and try to capture three lessons learned. So lesson learned number one. The data chain. So to me, this was the hardest part coming from DRMs, um, especially for me to grasp that you have to. It's by far the most important and the most powerful aspect of EDM that as an implementer or as an administrator of EDM that you really need to understand. Um, it's not easy, but just keep at it and uh, eventually it will start to click. And I almost found that once I kind of unlearned or set aside what I knew about DRM, it made the increasing and understanding of the EDM data chain a bit easier for me. Um, another point is, you know, keep it simple. You know, when you create EDM applications, it's going to create these constructs called node types and hierarchy sets and node sets for you um, out of the box. Um, a lot of times, you know, those default data chain objects are enough. You don't have to go crazy on your data chain. Keep it simple. As you start to expand the EDM functionality and footprint, um, you can start to um, selectively enhance the different data chain objects to support what you need, but keep it simple to begin with. Um, viewpoint copy was also very important for Care First. So I know a lot of people, especially coming from a, a DRM um, world, you know, archiving and having historical copies of hierarchies is very important. Um, you can do that in EDM through a viewpoint copy process where it will actually create a separate data chain of your hierarchy, thereby preserving that at that point in time. And then you can keep it visible in EDM for reference purposes, um, hierarchy compare purposes. You can archive it if you don't want to display it anymore. But essentially, you've kind of created a read-only snapshot of your hierarchies at that point in time. So um, the viewpoint copy is very important. And then finally, you know, I'll probably get on my soapbox a bit on this, but for those that are implementing, you really need to get out of, and I was guilty of this at the beginning, really get out of, but the DRM did it this way mindset. The more you can, instead of focusing on what DRM does that EDM doesn't do or doesn't do in the same way, Focus on what EDM does well, and you'll find yourself uh, uh, being much more effective with EDM. 
Lesson learned number two, the custom adapter. So like I said, since PCM does not yet have a package adapter for enterprise data management, we had to use the custom adapter, which is kind of a bare bones adapter where you do have to do all of the application setup um, instead of EDM providing a, a lot of it for you out of the box. So it, it is more time consuming. It's a longer setup time. There is no, um, there are very limited validations and there is no direct integration to PCM, whereas with something like planning in the cloud, I can export dimensions directly from EDM to the inbox of planning in the cloud. I could not, I cannot do that yet with PCM. So uh, just be aware it does give you the extreme flexibility. That is nice, uh, but it is going to involve more setup time and um, lose some of that direct integration. Uh, but there's ways to minimize the effect of that. You can really, um, I can't emphasize enough about cleanly and effectively designing your views and your viewpoints to make it as intuitive and easy to manage for your EDM administrator as possible. Um, property templates is another one. Even though I was using the custom adapter, I can still leverage some of the out-of-the-box property templates. Uh, for example, if I needed a consolidation operator or plan type or um, an aggregation operator for a custom application, I can still use the property templates that EDM provides and it kind of gives you some of those pre-filled drop-down lists and some of the other um, nuances of those properties. So there is some ways to kind of make the custom adapter setup easier by using the, the built-in property templates. And then, you know, just as much as you can provide exam examples, do a lot of knowledge transfer. And I spent a lot of time with Care First on developing templates of request files so that as they came across different business scenarios, they could easily say, okay, I need to update my mapping viewpoint. So here's an example of how to do that. Here's a, I need to update some um, accounts. Here's a, a request for another example of how to do that. So try to, try to give the, the customer as much help as you can. And then finally, just realize that when you're working with the custom adapter, you're very likely going to need some type of a custom ETL process. I mean, uh, we were able to do some things in this project to minimize that, but we still needed some custom ETL processing regardless. So just kind of recognize that um, some form of ETL will likely be necessary to do what you want to do. And then finally, um, design to optimize. So like I was saying before, instead of always focusing on how DRM did things, really think about what EDM does well. It does many things well. Um, again, it, the purpose-built deployment philosophy works very well. Um, the maintenance views, the subscriptions, the, uh, the hierarchy compares, the, the request files, these features work very well. So design your solution to emphasize the strengths rather than trying to um, expose maybe some product gaps that aren't quite there yet. And of course, user education knowledge transfer. I mentioned that before, but it's just critically important to do throughout the project as well as I go up. So there you have it, um, three lessons learned. Um, before we go into Q&A, uh, just a reminder, um, next year's K-Scope uh, will be in Boston at the end of June, so I hope everybody can attend. I, I attended my first K-Scope this year in Seattle, had a great experience, so I hope to see many of you in Boston next year. And with that, Karen, um, if there are any questions, we can address those now. Okay, we do have a couple of questions. Um, anybody who has a question and hasn't put it in the questions box yet, go ahead and do that now. Um, but we do have a couple. The first one is, does EDM have a packaged adapter for SBase? No, not yet. Um, the current packaged adapters are planning uh, both PBCS, I'm still referring to some of the old terms, uh, but PBCS, EPBCS, and Financial Cloud GL. Um, an FCCS adapter is coming very soon, and uh, there also is an Oracle EBS adapter in the works, um, but there is not an, an SBase or an OAC adapter yet. 
Okay, the next question is, is workflow forms or enrichment part of a future roadmap? Yes, it is definitely. Uh, for sure, enrichment, um, that's uh, some feedback that um, I've mentioned several times to Oracle product development based on another client we're at. Um, uh, because in EDM, when you are using the approval workflows, which work very well, you're still kind of interacting in that same viewpoint interface that I was showing on some of those screenshots. There isn't like a nice streamlined form yet, like you would have with DRG. Um, so, so the yeah forms are coming and enrichment workflows are coming. Um, there is a workaround uh, on the enrichment side. Um, EDM does allow uh, some collaboration prior to submitting a request. There actually is an assign button. So as you start to make changes in EDM through a request, you can assign that request to uh, a colleague, and they can work on that request for you, with you, uh, kind of collaborate back and forth kind of do some of that enrichment type uh, functionality and then submit the request and have it enter the approval flow. But, but yes, both of those are definitely on the roadmap and hopefully uh, sooner rather than later. Okay, uh, next question is, is there an API for boundary systems to access the data in EDMCS? Good question. So um, I didn't talk a lot about it here um, as far as some of the automation because due to just the, the time and budget, we didn't have a chance to do some of the automation at Care First. But um, yes, through the REST API, um, which is continuing to be enhanced um, on a frequent basis by Oracle, you can do a lot of things with EDM. Um, you can do things uh, such as exporting dimensions, you can submit requests, you can locate a viewpoint, search for nodes inside a viewpoint, um, but it does require um, some knowledge of the REST API and then some type of a scripting language, uh, whether it be Python or PowerShell or Groovy or something to that extent to call these REST API endpoints. Um, so yes, you can programmatically through the REST API. There's some pretty good documentation on the REST API in EDM um, on the Oracle site. And as a side note, um, there is some EPM automate support with EDM, but it's limited to basic administrative features like uh, migrating snapshots or, or uploading users or exporting security groups, those types of admin functions. Uh, if you want to do anything as far as interacting with the hierarchies, exporting dimensions, you need to go through the rest of your Okay, that is it for the questions that we have so far. I don't see any coming in right now. So, um, all right, well, thank you, Kevin, for presenting for us today. Thank you all for attending. Um, don't forget this presentation was recorded and will be available for viewing on the ODTUG website. And um, I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Carmen.